A useful device for helping us understand how an object behaves is a potential energy curve. This is basically just a graph of potential energy versus position. From just seeing that, we can readily visualize forces acting on objects and thus their accelerations. Here's how it works. Every conservative force is the negative gradient of a potential energy function. What do I mean by gradient? Well, gradient is a change of something with position. A rate can generally be thought of as a change in some quantity with time. A gradient is the change in the quantity with position. So just as a rate can be thought of as the slope of the graph of this quantity versus time, the gradient is the slope of the graph of this quantity plotted versus position. So here we see that the force is the negative change with position x of potential. So our conservative force times distance is equal to the conservative work done, which is equal to the negative of the potential energy change. It makes perfect sense. The potential energy drops is what's allowing the potential to do work on whatever the object is. Here are some examples showing a potential energy function and a graph of the force. So here on the left, we're showing a plot for near surface gravity. A plot for near surface gravity, mgy y being height. So as height y increases, potential energy u increases proportionally. That's a straight line. It's got a constant slope. That slope has to be mg. Take the negative of that for the force. Sure enough, you see a constant force. It's negative g. Next, we'll look at our Hooke's Law spring. A Hooke's Law spring has a slightly more complicated potential function. It's 1 half kx squared. Without calculus, we can't say directly what the slope is. We can see, though, from the graph that it starts out negative. At 0, it's 0, and then it gets more and more positive. Take the negative of that. That means you've got a positive force going to 0 and then more negative. And that's perfectly consistent with what we're used to with the Hooke's Law spring force, f equals minus kx. Potential functions often have points that are of, of a special interest known as equilibrium points. Equilibrium points are places where the force is zero. In other words, the potential is locally unchanging. Small deviations from this point don't change the potential by very much. There are two kinds of equilibrium points. One is a stable equilibrium. In a stable equilibrium, the potential goes up a little bit away from that equilibrium point, and so there's a restoring force. The Hooke's Law spring is a classic example of that. Another kind of equilibrium point is the unstable equilibrium, at that particular point, there is no force. So at the particular equilibrium point, there is no tendency for the potential force to disturb the object that's there. But any excursion away from that equilibrium point, the potential will apply a force to drive it further away from the point. That's why it's called unstable, because the slightest change, the slightest shift from that equilibrium point, and zoom, the system is driven away from equilibrium. Let's see an example of actually making an energy diagram and seeing what kinds of insights we can get from it. So here we see we're setting it up, r is our variable for position, and then we'll plot potential energy u as a function of position. Here we have an interesting potential. It says that the energy at, here it says that the energy at large separations r is very close to zero. There's some minimum value of the energy at a fairly near separation. Then if you try to get even closer, the energy goes up quite quickly. This, it turns out, is approximately what a chemical bond looks like, where R would be the separation between the two atoms of the bond. The next thing you do, looking at an energy diagram, is to mark the total energy of the system as a horizontal line. We're going to be looking at just conservative forces here, total mechanical energy, potential plus kinetic, and it's going to be constant. So where the potential energy is low, the kinetic energy is high, the object is moving fast. Where the potential energy is high, the kinetic energy is correspondingly lower. The diagram shows us the partition of energy between potential and kinetic everywhere. Looking at this, we can ask and we can answer, where is the particle? If E is truly the total energy of the system, the particle has a possibility of being in those positions where the total energy is greater than the potential energy. Because if the potential energy is greater than the total energy, then it doesn't have enough energy to get there. Unless the particle is right at that point where the potential energy equals the total energy, then it has some non-zero kinetic energy. Either it's moving to greater separations, in which case it will just move on and on and on and on and on and on and on out to infinity, or it's moving toward smaller separation, in which case 
it will speed up until it gets to that equilibrium point, then begin very quickly slowing down. It will reach a speed of zero at this point here where the potential energy equals the total energy. And then the force, which is the negative of the gradient, the gradient is negative here, so the force will be positive, pushing it back away, and then the object will continue zooming on out to infinity. What's going to eventually happen is the system will fly apart because it has more energy than the binding energy. Now if the energy is lower, where is the particle? Well now the particle has a much smaller region where it can be. It can only be in those places where the potential energy is less than the total energy. So it's a bound particle here. Now it stays in this region. How does the particle behave? Well it's simply going to be going back and forth. Here it's got a force pushing it forward away. Here it's got a force pulling it back. So the particle will be oscillating back and forth, back and forth. The bond will be vibrating.